Hey guys, it's Mrs. Rivers. I really, really miss you right now, and I hope that you're all doing well. Um, we're going to have some videos that are hopefully fun, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit and um, get us through this art learning online. So um, please follow along, and you're going to post what you create in the comments of this video. Uh, so that way I can grade them. Make sure you're doing your best. If you don't have materials that I am using, just use whatever you can. So if I'm using paint and you don't have any paints, uh, then just use crayons. If you don't have any crayons, just use pencil. Um, try to make it work. Also, I do have some kitties that might be joining us. <laughs> because they like to be doing whatever I'm doing. Like here's a cattail right here. Um, so just, <laughs> um, just uh, try to follow along and do your best. And um, I hope that I get to see you soon because I really do miss you. Okay, I will talk to you soon. Okay, so we are going to be doing some coffee paintings. This is a household item that most people have, and I'm hoping that it can reach every student and not just some students who might have painting supplies, but every student. So let's look at the work of, and I'm sorry if I get this wrong, I think his name is Gadak Al-Nazir. He is a famous artist on Instagram. You can follow him on at Coffeetopia. He does a lot of coffee paintings that are really amazing. So you can see in this one he's using a toothbrush and a comb to create that splatter painting with coffee effect for the sky. And then he actually uses coffee grounds for the silhouette of the person in the corner with the ground. On this one, he used a paintbrush and coffee to create two little pixies in the middle of this paper. I think this is absolutely beautiful. It's delicate and whimsical, and I just love it. On this one, he got even more creative, and he painted his hand with coffee, and then went in with a paintbrush and added little details. So we can see lots of different things going on here. There's some splatter painting happening around the edges. There's two little girls in the middle of his palm kind of lifting each other up. There's soldiers putting down a flag. Um, just a lot of detail, intricate detail that he put into these paintings. This one I love because he uses, again, both the coffee grounds for the silhouette in the background as well as the painted coffee. Um, he got a beautiful effect using the different values, the tints and shades of coffee that coffee can provide, some lights and dark browns, plus his shapes are just gorgeous. This one won him an award of Creative User of the Month. He did the, and I'm sure we've all seen this before, the two people under an umbrella, but this time, instead of using crayons or paint, he used, you guessed it, coffee. Love this one. He did a thumbprint and then very small, painted in a little boy reading a book. So he uses a lot of silhouettes in his work. This one is also gorgeous. It's got some perspective going on with some light and dark values of the coffee with some silhouettes in the inside. This one is going to kind of mimic what we are going to do today. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. And last but not least, uh, he also has become famous for painting on the backs of leaves with coffee. So leaves, when they turn brown, they give him that uh, brown background that he already wants and then he uses coffee to add layers and layers of a design and different shapes and I love sea things, um, things about the ocean, 
Like, and this ship is just gorgeous. I would definitely hang this in my house. All right, so let's get started. Okay guys, so now that we've looked at some artists who create using coffee, we are gonna make our own coffee um, artwork. So you wanna be using black coffee. You don't want my favorite, which is coffee with some cream and sugar. Makes it all delicious, but for this, we really want black coffee. If you don't have coffee, you can always use watercolor paints. You'd want to use the brown. Um, and if you don't have any paints or any coffee, <clears throat> then you can draw it, draw along. Just use a pencil and paper. Um, make sure you ask your parents for help with getting the coffee. I don't want anybody getting burned and please don't drink the coffee. Most of us are not old enough to be drinking coffee yet. Um, we're just going to be using it to create art. And if you really want to use a paintbrush, I have a small paintbrush here. It's very little. Or if you don't have a paintbrush, you can always look online. There are tons of creative ways to create a paintbrush. I've seen where people use uh, sponges like to clean sinks and I've seen where people get sticks from outside and tape some uh, leaves or <clears throat> like even doll hair. I've seen somebody cut their doll's hair a little bit and then taped it around the stick. So go ahead and get creative. If you don't have these supplies, either use what you got or get creative and think of ways that you can make your own art materials. Okay. So first off, we want our paper to be landscape, which is side to side or horizontal. We don't want our paper to be portrait. You think of when you see pictures of people, they're usually up and down. We don't want that. We want side to side or landscape for this picture. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dip our paintbrush into the coffee and we're going to start not at the very bottom, but not in the middle, kind of somewhere in between. And we're gonna create some curved lines that go all the way up. And you can see with coffee, it's really, really light the first time you paint it. I'm gonna fill in where the trunk is. Just kinda paint that in. And then I'm just gonna start making the branches. Now the branches get thinner and thinner and also, if you're creating one and it doesn't look like mine, that's okay. I'm using a reference image myself, and mine's not even going to look like the reference image. And that's okay. That's the great thing about art, is it's not somebody else's art, it's your art. And whatever you make is perfectly great, perfectly okay. So again, when you go over it a couple times, it's going to get darker and darker. So there's my first tree. <clears throat> okay. Well, the goal is here to have probably two or three trees in the background. The background always starts on the same place. So all my trees should be touching where my paintbrush is for the background. Alright, so I'm going to fast forward through this part. You guys are going to see me really fast, paint some trees, and then we'll move on to the next set. Okay. I think I like my background trees to just have two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a hair blow dryer and I'm going to make sure that these two trees are completely dry. If you don't have a hair blow dryer, just give it about 10-15 minutes and then come back and finish. So here's my hair blow dryer. Now you got to remember if you push the hair blow dryer, if you're using one, right next to the paint, it's going to spread. So you got to kind of hold it far away and then slowly go in circles. Okay, now that I can see that my 
background trees are nice and dry, I can move on to my middle ground trees. Now the middle ground trees are not going to be on that same line. They're going to be down a little bit. Not all the way down here, but just a little bit. And we're going to make them come up and pretty much reach the top, the same level that these trees are at. So I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to start it lower. And we're going to go all the way up. put a second middle ground tree probably right there. Okay, these are completely dry, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second layer of coffee. I've got grounds in my coffee to these trees. This is going to make them darker because, in atmospheric perspective, things that are in the foreground or the front are darker than things that are in the background. And if you would look at pictures of I don't know, mountains, you would see that this is true. The mountains are always darker in the front and lighter in the background. So basically, I'm just tracing over the lines I've already made. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, trace over this tree. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm going to blow dry it. paper is perfectly dry and now I can start on the foreground trees. The foreground trees are going to be even lower, not going to be here, not going to be there, but even lower, and they're going to be our biggest trees. Things that are in the foreground tend to be bigger than in things in the background. So if my hand is really close, it looks enormous, but if farther away it gets, the smaller and smaller it gets. It's the same way when looking outside at things. So we're gonna, again we're going to get our coffee and I'm going to start this tree down here. And this tree is going to be much wider than my previous trees. And it might even go off the page a little. Alright, so there is one foreground tree, and now I gotta add my last foreground tree here.
I'm gonna blow dry them. Okay. Now because these are in the foreground, they should be the darkest. So we did one layer there, two layer there, three layers here. That'll make it nice and dark. So I'm just gonna go over those lines, go over where I painted. or whatever you want and if you want to change your animal to make it a bunny or I don't know a dinosaur whatever you want you can put right here I'm gonna make a deer because that's my reference image the picture that I'm looking at online and for this I'm gonna keep using my small brush if you haven't been using a small brush by now I would switch to one or find your creative way to make that small brush. All right, so I'm gonna start with the head. And this is gonna be, of course, really light again. I'm basically gonna make an oval with a little place for the muzzle, some ears. I'm going to make the neck and the neck comes down pretty far and then the body little tail and then um, legs. horizon line. The horizon line is where the sky and the ground meet in a line. It's where you'd see the sun set to where you can only see part of the sun and you can't see all of it. That's your horizon line. I'm actually going to take some water and a clean paintbrush and I'm just going to lay down some water. There's a little ground. And this is going to be hard to see but Wherever you put the water is where your paint is going to go, or your coffee. And so now, I'm going to put down my coffee, and it's going to be slightly lighter because it's been diluted. shadow to my trees. Just a bit.
it. You've just made your very first artwork, well, at least with me, um, that you've made with coffee as an everyday household item. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I can't wait to see all of your beautiful artworks in the comments. Um, again, please use what you have. If you don't have coffee, just draw it. If you, you know, have paint, you can use paint. Um, it's just one way to try out something new. Okay, I look forward to seeing what you all create.